Hello and welcome everyone to the Pascal Dennis Music Podcast. I'm here with Pascal Dennis and David Logan. Hello guys. We want to talk today about the upcoming album Love is a Drug from Hell and the upcoming album has the various expressions of love as a theme and Pascal could you just briefly explain again the theme of the upcoming album? Yeah, uh, Love is a Drug from Hell is um about the various expressions and forms and experiences of love, comic love, romantic love, obsessive toxic love, love within a family, so love uh, of a father for his daughter, and in my case, love for, of a family for one another, uh, friendship and other forms of love. It's, it's an album in sun colors, primarily with some moon colors to offset and uh, uh bring the the sun colors and the moon colors to to full life um our first album which we've talked about earlier um crazy angels is an album in moon colors and it's the story of my personal coming of age the story of of my family and and, and david's family really the last 100 120 years um and about um coming to terms with the past accepting it and then living your life fully not being stuck with it accepting it but letting it go so um it's very much a yin and yang so uh first album is about coming to terms with life and this album is about living your life fully can you elaborate on the decision to title both the album and one of its songs with the same title like how does this choice contribute to the narrative cohesion of the album so uh, the album and the uh, the title song is informed and inspired by A Midsummer Night's Dream, which is a beautiful play by Shakespeare, one of my favorite plays. And in the play, there is this troublemaker of a spirit whose name is Puck. And Puck creates all sorts of chaos and havoc for the humans. In the play, he puts spells on them. He makes the wrong people fall in love with the wrong people. He turns one guy into a donkey and then the queen you know, under a spell, falls in love with the donkey. So he creates chaos, and then he sits back and watches it all, laughing his head off. So it's really about my misadventures uh, and adventures in love. Um, and it has that kind of light, over-the-top, funny, humane, forgiving spirit, uh, I hope. So the overall album is kind of comic, right? Yeah, the title is kind of funny as well, I mean... It's a yeah. pretty strong thing to say that love is a drug. Do you think that's a positive <laughs> or negative thing? <laughs> um, well, if the I whole point. Real, real quick here, like they, there's, there have been some studies done where they compare the brains um, of people who have like just fallen in love deeply with the brain of you know somebody who's just done cocaine, and there's more intensity and more um, addiction. Uh, it is Lo love is an addiction and you know, there, mm -hmm. there are definitely people out there who are like addicted to falling in love they love to fall in love but they're not able to maintain relationships and very often these people you know can be kind of toxic because they don't understand how to maintain relationships they're just they just want the euphoria of of falling in love so it, it is a drug <laughs> and it has very similar effects and um David, how is this theme kind of reflected in, in the arrangement? I mean, it's, I wouldn't say that it's reflected. The way I approach production is, is always based on the, the lyrics in the song and the message in the song. And also, you know, the chord types that Pascal chooses. I suppose you could say I, I sort of build the city block by block. Um, so basically each song is built as its own standalone component. And then after we have usually 18 to kind of 24 ish songs, that's when Pascal and I kind of throw everything on the wall. We're just sort of like, yeah, I think, yeah, no, that's good. And, and it, it mostly comes from Pascal. Um, and this is also where his awesome family comes into play because they, they get a little say in, in it as well about which songs <laughs> they, they like and the order, the order of the songs on the album. But Pascal will always check with me for the final, like, what do you think? So as far as production goes, like, I really do just, it's a la carte. Each song is its own universe. And then after that, it's sort of like... Um, 
I don't know, I guess it's like like color matching, really, because, yeah, some of the songs will have sun colors, some will have moon colors. And then Pascal and I, you know, in our, our weekly meetings, we also discuss uh, album themes, right? Mm. So what is what what do we think because we'll start we'll start to see an evolution of certain kinds of songs and then there's discussion about hey should we put that all in one album or should we space it out on 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 the next uh <laughs> I've lost count the next 12 or 20 <laughs> albums that we're going to be doing. I, I can't count anymore. We're on uh, album seven. We're planning album seven as we we're speak. Planning album seven. Oh, so yeah. we're three albums ahead. <laughs> yeah. And this was supposed to originally be a four album project. And then he's like, oh, I don't know. I think we should do two more you know, right? Six album project. And now it's, yeah, we're already planning the seventh and, you know, we're, we're, if we're planning the seventh, we're already looking <laughs> the hills at eight, nine and, and 10. You know? so, <laughs> as we've always said, we're just going to keep going until we're abducted by aliens. You know? <laughs> well, if I could add to what David's saying, he has such uh, an intuitive sense uh, for the song. So, you know, love is a drug from hell is this, uh, everything we've been talking about. So, he just intuits and puts it together an arrangement that allows the jokes and the humor and the likeness and the ridiculousness of love. So it's, it's a, it's an uptempo blues rhythm. The great St. Louis brass is in, we've got the hand claps that, that, oh, that give the rhythm a kick and the really funny uh, uh, piano licks and uh, horn licks. And it's just got a crazy light, funny vibe to it, you know? Um, yeah, so it feels like what it is. And on the, on the lyrics side, if I could just uh, suggest for, for, for young writers and poets and, um, you know, really, um, study the, the great lyric poets of the past and that's English lyric poets like, you know, uh, Wordsworth and Shelley and Coleridge and Lord Byron are the great, uh, songsmiths of, of the 20th century, like Cole Porter and, the Gershwins and Matt Dennis, et cetera, but even, you know, Persian lyric poetry, you know, um, the Rumi and Hafiz or ancient Greek or Roman lyric poetry. For me, I've mentioned before, uh, Chinese classical poetry is overwhelmingly great. So there's a book called Chinese classical poetry by, uh, um, uh, translated by David Hinton. And in there, you'll find incredible gems by Li Bai and Du Fu, and and that's what informs my lyrics. And and I think you you'll find it's a treasure chest. So I'm just looking at randomly the um you know the the lyrics here. So um another mint julep by the tulip tree. Lord, what fools us mortals be! You laugh so pretty like a silver bell. How do I get off your carousel? Your daddy got breath like a chimpanzee, a pork pie hat, and he don't like me. You went for a drive, said you'd come back soon. You didn't come back till the harvest moon. Love is a drug from hell when the one you love don't care to treat you well. And that's just lyric poetry informed by all these people. Right? So uh, and that's another theme I wanted to just emphasize for young artists. We spring into the future. Our band, the Crazy Angels, we're trying to spring into the future from the past. So we take these wonderful styles that David and I grew up with, you know, classic R&B, 1950s doo-wop music, bossa nova, big band jazz, you know, show tunes, rock and roll, and make them new, make them fresh. So we spring into the future, but it's from that wonderful, wonderful uh, root, you know. Um, and, and then it's fresh, but it's also familiar and engaging hopefully that's what we're trying to do david Definitely. could you talk about how the band brought their ideas to the song love is a drug from hell yeah i think this is where we we realized that julio was probably kidnapped and raised on the mississippi <laughs> delta um at some point during his childhood um yeah th this is you know like look you have to understand as as a producer and and a, you know and an arranger you know i'm i'm sort of like it's like uh how do you explain it it's uh i'm setting up like a like a track basically like a like a fun track slash obstacle course if you will and then i'm basically um 
saying, go play <laughs> <laughs> in my track, but go play. And literally track is like, cause you know, track can be like a race track track can be a, you know, music track. Right. Um, so it's, it's a very good analogy in fact. So, yeah, I mean, if we, if we just, you know, th like, I mean, this is just, I, I gotta play this cause this is just, uh, this is, uh, this is our, our great, um, Giulio Rosatelli, uh, and, uh, yeah. and this is also someone we haven't talked about yet, um, which is Roberto Ladanza, and he's the one playing the keyboards on this. Um, just the, these, these riffs, I know we're talking about love is drug from hell, but if you're asking about like the contributions and stuff and, and this idea of go play in the track, I mean, these two guys are like locked in. Nobody like rattlesnakes, nobody like e And it just sets up this, this amazing force. So, you know, now as far as love is a drug from hell, just have a moment on that. I got a girl, a green-eyed blonde, wake back, sling back. Yeah, I mean, like that's that's the San Luis Brass. It's uh, Davide Sambrota on the piano. Um, so yeah, this is uh, again. I mean, like you know, I wrote the horn parts, you know, and uh, you know, and then I, I usually deliver those um, to um, to Jeff. He's he's the 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 San, the San Luis Brass section. Um, and then, yeah, like, uh, you know, like he can take certain liberties. He knows that um, he j as long as he's getting the, the, the fundamentals. So, yeah, I, I sort of like thinking of it like, you know, here's the racetrack. Go have fun. Go play, you know, make noise. And then you know, <laughs> the, 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 the one message I always have, you know, for all of them is like, if you are going to make riffs and, and licks, it, it always has to be in between what pascal is singing and so if you listen here, even me as an arranger ba, ba, da, you know getting right in between right so it's like always you know and that's that's really just you know out of the Frank Sinatra playbook right there, you know, like that's how yep. they do those arrangements, you know, I look boo, 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 doo, and then I, boo, boo, doo, boo, doo, doo, <laughs> and then she went and boo, boo, doo, boo, doo, doo, and I, you know, and so, yeah, that's, it's that's call it call and response. And they're so great. Precisely. They're so yeah. great. And David is so adept at always when writing a song, always thinking those terms. So a few words, and yeah. that fits in with the lyric poetry idea, a few words and then the response, a few words and the response. And the response is always funny and unexpected. Oh, my God, he put in a sharp nine. Huh? What the hell? <laughs> yeah, and that, that's the other thing I also appreciate about when Pascal's writing these songs is he'll leave, he leaves space in so that, you know, the band can can do their thing or I can do my thing as as, as a horn arranger or arranging strings or you know, he's always leaving these these lovely spaces in. And, you know, I think I think part of it is just the the natural space that comes in between his lyric poetry. And I think part of it is also he's conscious, like, oh, I got to let the band do something here. <laughs> it's a mixture, no, Pascal? <laughs> well, yeah, except it's a pleasure. So I got to let I, I want to let the band do something because, you know, people don't want to hear me chirping you know it's one of, it's a back and forth right that makes it's again it's yin and yang that makes it rich you know yeah if i could suggest to young arrangers songwriters poets and so on um collaborate with really great people and then let them play i mean my expression of what david just said is uh the the river metaphor so a song is like a river my job as the writer is to define the banks of the river the structure the feel you know with david uh the chord uh progressions the extensions and the lyrics and then let these wonderful players play <laughs> yeah you know and, and they're always delightful like wow 
you know, occasionally we'll say, ah, well, maybe this tweak, this tweak, that, but overall it's just a complete delight, you know? There, there is some dialogue between, you know, not some, <laughs> there's always dialogue between me <laughs> and, and the players and, you know, the, uh, sorry to just keep going back to Rattlesnake Road, but it, it no, please. you know, the, the discussion was like, you know, like kind of like the cigar box guitar, like the really kind of twangy. <laughs> Like that sort of steel slide thing, like I don't know the cigar box uh, guitar, and 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 it, like I still have no idea, like kind of how he did it, and and I didn't even really ask. I, I I just like in the end, as a producer, it's like all right, cool. The objective was met. We got the tone, you know, that that we wanted. That's going to support because Rattlesnake Road. I mean that you know, like it it has to feel like Rattlesnake Road, you know, yeah. and for me. You know, uh, Roberto and, and Julio just. Nobody like rattlesnakes, nobody like eel. No, and the subtle use of the, um, you know, we, we put a little. Nobody like rattlesnakes. We, we put a little rattlesnake sound in there. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, and we always have fun, you know, and Pascal and I sort of do this dialogue back, back and forth where. You know, he'll he'll say, you know, something like a bass clarinet or like castanets. And I always answer and I put the castanets. <laughs> so I, I write we, for I write for David in the band. I saw Kelly. I think some of it is natural. And I, I think sometimes you are conscious of it, you know, and mm -hmm. sometimes maybe you weren't expecting us to put the little rattlesnake <laughs> sound in there. I don't know if you were or weren't, but, and then I think like at the very end of the song, we also. To oh. yeah, you that little, uh, we should talk a little bit more about the songs and, you know, uh, rattlesnake road is it's one of my favorites. That. Yeah. You keep going. Let, <laughs> let's, let's continue. Um, sure. So it's a it's a coming of age song actually, and it's about accepting the ups and downs in in life and coming out of very bad times, and then living fully based on what you've learned. I met a genie, and he gave me a gold trampoline, and I I got out of all the horror and the misery of 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 my early years, you know. So, but that's life, and then you honor you know Hank Williams and and Jimmy Dean and all the greats before. So that's what informs this uh, this song, you know. And David again just intuits this, you know. So it's a very spooky and mysterious and atmospheric um, arrangement. And you know, the boys obviously intuited it as well. I'm sure you gave them guidance, but the Matchbox yeah. guitar Ooh, is oh. Yeah. the 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 other thing I just wanted to add about this idea of sort of you know shedding your skin like a rattlesnake and sort of leaving something of your past behind, right? Bingo. Bingo. Right. So and and the the point is, you know, as a composer, my like you know I write music for for video games. Um, I'm I I have a secret life as a songwriter. Also, <laughs> we won't talk about that. Um, He's very you know, good, composer, folks. You know, I was always filtering my idols. You know, so I'd look at, you know, Shostakovich and Janáček and, you know, some of these composers that really informed a lot of my music. And then at a certain point, yeah, like you, you have to, I had to become David Logan, you know, my own person as a, as a composer, right? And same thing as a producer. And so, you know, part of the beauty of working with with these young, great, talented musicians, and this is partly my job, is to let them filter their idols, to let them take their, you know, what they're trying to be, what they're aspiring to be. But then, yeah, like say a little bit like, all right, you're a little bit off the track. Let's let's come back just a little bit, because my job is hopefully, you know, to, to, to well, I won't say hopefully my job has been to bring the freshness and, and, you know, take these old ideas, make them new, showcase Pascal, you know, in the best possible way. Um, that's, uh, that's, that's what I always tell also my students. And I would suggest to anyone who's, you know, thinking of doing any of this uh, professionally, it's normal that you, you know, filter your idols. It's normal 
you know, if you're a drummer that you want to sound like, you know, John Bonham um, at first, you know, but then you got to sound like your own self. And it's okay if you want to sing like Adele, you know, but eventually you got to sound like you, you know, and, um, and that's important. So, yeah, for me, there's a, that, that message is very clear in Rattlesnake Road. So we talked earlier about how our band, we, we're seeking to, to spring into the future from the past. And that's also true of these of this song in particular. The, the narrator is springing into the future from the past. So he's like a rattlesnake shedding his skin. Um, and he goes to the, crosses the river, the land of the dead. So it's metaphorically, he's going back into his past, into the horror and the death, the, the damnation, the depression, the insanity. And he comes back. And um, he's driving the Batmobile. He says, "God damn it, I'm going to kick ass and take names till the end of my life." And sure. there's a there's a quote here at the bottom of the lyric sheet. By the way, folks, you can go to our website, download all, all these lyrics anytime. And the quote is from a Stoic philosopher who, and it's something I have up on my whiteboard. Epictetus is his name, and the quote is, "It is difficulty that shows what a person is." So, when fate has given you a terrible challenge, remember that God has matched you with a difficult wrestler. Why, you ask? So that you may become an Olympian champion. Beautiful. So, God gives us these wow. challenges so that we can become <laughs> champions. Yeah. But it's not done without sweat or suffering, you know, and... That's One of my favorite about. lines in uh, Batman Begins is, Master Bruce, why do we fall down? So that we can pick ourselves up. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like such a simple line, but it's one of my favorites, and it, you know, because it's very true. And it, yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that, you know, all people are, you know, dealt adversity throughout their life, and you are judged um by not judged i think your character is determined by how you respond by how do you how do you handle yourself in 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 that particular state you know we had a wonderful session with one of david's uh, classes uh, a few weeks ago these really awesome. bright talented young people and the message we both gave if I, if I may say just building on david's point is for young artists now we've all been given a very bad hand because big tech gets all the value and there's a gigantic theft going on intellectual property is yeah. is being gobbled up by big tech the most obvious example is ai they put in an essay a song a painting uh, uh a novel and they say okay give me a, a short story that sounds like margaret atwood but that's plain theft anyhow that's mm -hmm. the that's the hand we've been given so we have to use this hand and accept it to become Olympic champions. What that means practically for you all is you've got to be twice as good. You've got to be good, not just at your art, whether it's music or dance or painting, but you've also got to be good at finance and mm -hmm. accounting and marketing and management and all those sorts of things. And it's not fair. It sucks. Why can't you just yes. focus on your art? Well, that's, the hand we've been given, folks, and we have to treat it like Epictetus says. It's like a, a wrestler that God has given us. Yeah, I was listening to, to you know, some composers on a YouTube video talking about, you know, uh, the fact that literally nobody gives a crap about your music, you know, and, and you know, that what people care about is your ability to maintain relationships, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, because anybody can write the music, anybody can produce Pascal's record, um, but not anybody can produce it the way that I have. <laughs> and that's based on the trust that, you know, Pascal and I have built. It's based on the relationship that's, Absolutely. you know, been fostered for almost 30 years now with a giant <laughs> pause. <that's still laughs> And so, yeah, so I, I, I think that's really true. I think that, yeah, like literally anybody can do my job. Anybody can produce Pascal, but not anyone can produce it the way I am because of my unique understanding, because he and I also come from the same city. 
we both had crazy sets of parents <laughs> <laughs> and um and we both overcame you know we both overcame and and you know sort of made something of ourselves you know in in different ways but still we have and so yeah i think i think that's really true for for all young people who are you know thinking of doing this as a job you know in the end nobody cares about your music literally nobody you know and uh like even if you think about you know people who are fans of big you know artists out there they're more fans of the people than they're fans of the music these days that's that's what it feels like to me you know yeah, sure. um, even just watching um the San Remo uh, song festival here in Italy that just happened last week. Yeah. Um, you know, it, like it, it's a popularity contest, you know, it's all based on the look of the artist and, you know, and the best looking person wins and the older people who competed, who are in their sixties, who are not, you know, they, they don't even qualify because they're old and, but they're the most talented. <laughs> 